Yes, me and my body are up with butt iron. Take me to the freaker's bow. Well, here you are. Hopefully you got enough butter smeared all over your body. Because we are starting. We are live. It is Friday night, May 3, 2019. And we're live on reallibertymedia.com. That's right. Freaker's ball time. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully... Oh, uh, hopefully you're all ready for this. Hopefully I'm ready for this. Hopefully Moose Girl's ready for this. I haven't seen her in the chat yet, but she'll be around, I am sure. She's probably sitting there right now, panicked, getting ready for the show. <laughs> anyway, welcome to everybody out there in all the various places that Real Liberty Media goes. Uh, RLMRadio.xyz for all you audio listeners and all the other places the audio stream goes. Talking to you over there, realliberty.org, and you, freedomsnetwork.com, and, oh, internet radio, and tune in, and, oh, just a schlock of places that the RLM radio audio stream goes. But for the video feed, head on over to reallibertymedia.com, look the show pages thing there, and uh, just pick the freaking small show page, should be the first one. Uh, and uh, then you'll you'll be seeing the video there, or you'll have the video uh, capability, and also the chat. Or if you want, just log on to irc.freenode.net, jump on into Pound Pound, Real Liberty Media, and you'll be in the chat here, and you can look at the video on vaughn.live slash Real Liberty Media, and you'll be, you'll be here. You'll be here with, with us on this fine freaker's night. So, uh, well, we got going on here something in the chat. Somebody about an airplane and uh, shallow water uh, coming into Gitmo from Jacksonville. Huh. All right. Well, whatever happened there, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, howdy to all the folks over here in the chat. We got the Beetle. We got Cowboy Tech, myself, and the Mighty Moose Girl. We got Miss Kate, Mr. Asmo, Chell, Sedoni, Mr. Free enslaved with us. Uh, Graham Z, great show earlier, Grams. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, uh, let's see who else we got. Don C, we got Java Doctor. We got the Ponder Gander. He did a show earlier today, Ponder Gander, a.k.a. Vin E, Vincent Easley. Uh, good show also. Uh, great. Uh, Rain and Rob Works and Romes and Vanna the Bot. Vinny the Not Bot. And Weather Dork Z, Beth Z, Miss Beth Z, the Phantom and Suck Gal. Uh, we got Colfax and Cyborg Noodle, Frumpy and Gromit and uh, JJ's Kozu, that crazy Karl Marx spot. Did I, I forgot to mention Barman at the top there, but hey, Beth, hey, Beth, nice arm wave. <laughs> we got Kiss and Pone Sauce and uh, Sock Puppet and Salamo and uh, a fake, a fake Vanna White called Wanna Vite that, that uh, I just have to keep on smacking upside the head. I don't know. He, he keeps trying to throw out them fake some fake ducks, but you know, uh, let me just take a look. Let me let me just take a look here and see uh, when when did we last see the moose girl? Because uh, she should be here with us. Exhaled. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, five hours. Oh, okay. Well, I hope she's around. And uh, she's over eighteen, so I, I don't know why she would worry about the drinking age. <laughs> I don't think there should be a drinking age. I don't. I don't believe in these arbitrary ages set to do certain things. But uh, hey, you know. Oh, there's this Van Meter joining on in here with us, out of his Van Meter. Um, and uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, I don't know. I got plenty of stuff to talk about. As long as Moose Girl is safe, absolutely, Cowboy Tech. But I want her here. For, you know, my own personal greedy reasons, I want the moose girl here with me on the freaker's ball. She is, after all, half of the show. Had to share the link. All right. Awesome. 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 <laughs> uh, thanks for sharing. And I hope you got your uh, body all greased up with butter there for the freaker's ball. <laughs> oh. Let's see, it was an interesting kind of day here in, in the town of Moriarty, New Mexico. At least for me. I don't, I don't know about the rest of the town. But it was for me. Uh, I, I logged on. You know, you know how you got to pay certain bills at the beginning of every, every month or else, uh, you know, they, they turn stuff off that you don't want turned off. 
And so I got to pay certain bills at the beginning of the month. And so I do that through my, my, my uh, bank account, online bank account. And I went in there, and, and the dang thing wasn't working. So I said, eh, hey, whatever, maybe it's having a little issue. I'll check back later. A couple hours later, still the same problem. And uh, I was like, I, I was, yeah, yeah, I'm despicable. Um, anyway, so uh, <laughs> I logged on to the, the Twitter there, and I searched in there for my bank's name and uh, pay, bill pay, and hundreds of people, thousands of people complaining, hey, what's going on with your bill pay? Your bill pay ain't working. Yeah. Anyway. I went through it, and eventually it started working, uh, I don't know. It, it must have it must have been off for a good 12 hours or something like that. But, uh, hey, we got it done, and so they'll not shut off my stuff that I don't want shut off. Which is good, because otherwise, if they did, I wouldn't be able to be here with y'all. Y'all. <laughs> and then, I was, out, I was out there in the backyard, I was raking up some stuff. I I, 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 uh, I tilled up this one area that where a bunch of stuff was growing. A bunch of weeds and other stuff like that was growing. So I tilled it up a couple days ago. And I was out there today raking it, getting it all nice and clean. And I, and I hear these uh, sirens coming up towards my house. And, and I go over there and look. And across the street, we got these people that run the church. And uh, apparently it must one of, something happened to one of them. I, I don't know what happened yet, but uh, I went out there and looked and there was a, uh, a cop car and a fire engine and an ambulance and uh, they were milling around there for a while and uh, then I see the people in the, coming out of the house and moving their cars out of the driveway they got like five six cars parked in that driveway I don't know how many people live there I don't talk to them <laughs> I don't talk to neighbors I don't, I'm, no, I'm no fan of neighbors anyway so they're moving all their uh, cars out of the driveway and then the, then the uh, cop car left and the, and the uh, fire engine left and then the ambulance uh, turned around and backed into the driveway, and so I figured somebody had something happened to somebody there in the house. Anyway, I, that, that was that was enough for me. I walked back into the backyard and finished up what I was doing out of there. Uh, so anyway, I think this new area though in my yard, I mean, I, I've been prepping it for a couple of days there. I tilled it and I raked it and I watered it and I raked it some more, trying to get all the you know living stuff out of there. But it looks like it's fertile ground, and so far, whatever I, nothing nothing I've planted has grown. I, I don't know, maybe I, I, maybe I have a black thumb. Yes, thank you, Vinny, uh, for sending that. I appreciate it as always. Uh, you're you're a good man there. I don't care what Han says. <laughs> oh, and and who does really? <laughs> Anyway, uh, so that was uh, the excitement of the day, I guess. Uh, think of anything else that happened? Nah, not really. Um, so I, I don't know where Moose Girl is. I'm going to go ahead and play a set here, and hopefully she shows up during this particular time when I play this particular set. Uh, Bethany, we need to get on to, up to speed with online e-transfers. I, I don't know what that is either. Um, so I'm definitely not up to speed on that one. Oh yeah, yeah, PayPal, yeah, they 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 can uh, be not nice to certain people. Um, oh, my bank account here is uh, all right. Okay. Um, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, do the first set here right now, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. I'll be back after these are over and. And uh, here we go with the interrupters. Oh, yeah, Omar and the Howlers. Boogeyman there, live in Germany. Good stuff. Uh, boy, when I'm gone, I'm still going to be boogieing. All right, before that, we had uh, Rick Derringer, Edgar Winner, Ringo Stars, All Star Band, Frankenstein. Epic 11-minute version there of that. Uh, great stuff. And we kicked it off with the amazing Amy Allen and the Interrupters. Although I know she doesn't like to have her name pointed out. She's just part of the band. She's the band. Uh, anyway, <laughs> with Gave You Everything. Uh, so, uh, yeah, man. Uh, it's a great, great opening set there. Uh, Moose Girl has uh, shown up here in the chat, so I assume she'll be calling in any uh, moment now. And uh, we're going to get some more stuff lined up for the next set here. 
because you know that's uh, that's kind of like like something we like to do here on the Freakers Bow. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, it's it's, uh, it's uh, gonna be a good time here tonight. It's always a good time on the Freakers Bow. Stop that! What? I got oh. <laughs> Phone call, freak me out. <laughs> yeah, phone call. <laughs> I'm doing something else. All right, hey. Hey, you there? Hello, hello, hello. I am here. Oh, there you are. All right. Yes. So, how the heck you doing? Somebody kill Good. that. Somebody kill that duck. All right. Oh, she says she friended it. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. So, All righty. So you're doing good, huh? Well, it's Friday, so that's good because I got two days off. That is good. I mean, work sucks. So, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, that's why they call it's, it work, uh, I some guess. Some guy told me, it said, F you, F your company, and F your boss today to me on the phone. Well, isn't that just pleasant? Yeah, I mean, he didn't say F. He said the actual word, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, well, uh, uh, it's like, that's that's nice. Oh, yeah, real nice. Yeah. That's what I needed to hear. Yeah, because it's all your fault. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know. But, uh, so that was not pleasant. I, I, I just... Uh. <laughs> uh. Anyway... What's going on? Oh, not too much. Just, uh, you know, I started the show, told some stories about my day, mm. and then I said, you, know, you weren't here, so I said, said, all right, well, we'll play a set. She'll show up during the set. I sent you a text, I, but I, you yeah. apparently get those via email. So. Yeah, yeah. If you use my cell phone, I'll get them without my email on. Okay. Um, I think I have that. Um, yeah, I, I know you do. You've sent me texts on before. Number, yeah. yeah. So I'll have to remember that next time. Right. So sorry about that. I uh no big deal. Uh yeah, like I said, message, uh, but you know, it's a, no, 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 not a big deal. I I just went ahead and you know uh, said the opening hellos and all that normal stuff okay. that we do. Okay. Cool. And, uh, cool. Just talked about some nonsense for a few minutes, and then played some music, and then you there you were. <laughs> yeah. Hey, imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it's. It's still cold here. It's it's warming up. It's supposed to be in like the seventies tomorrow. Um but it's just been a long freaking winter and spring and just not getting out of this cold weather. Right. So it's ridiculous. But um it it's different every year, I mean um this year was a, a record-setting snow-breaking, snow-amount winter. Right. And it's just, uh, it, it, it was just an unusual, you know, unusually terrible winter this year. <laughs> right. We actually set a record for the most snow ever since they've been keeping records, so it was over 90 inches of snow. Sure. Um, And it was crazy. But anyway, um, we we talked about a story last week about this Minneapolis ex Minneapolis cop, right? That shot this woman in her PJs after she had called nine one one to report a sexual assault on right. someone thinking there was one going on in her alley, right? And she she, she calls the cops and she calls nine one one to request an officer or a car, and they say they they'll send someone. Well, 20 minutes later, no one, the cops aren't, aren't there yet. So she calls 911 again to have them show up to this supposed sexual assault that might be taking place in her alley behind her house. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they pull up in the squad, and she meets, she's standing outside. Right. In her pajamas, mind mm -hmm. you. Yep, yep. And she approaches the squad car. Well, then she puts her hand on the squad car. She raises her hand up. While she was approaching the squad car, and so the one cop thought she was a, a threat and reached over his partner and shot her fucking fatally. Right. Uh, I think it was the first shot that actually killed her because he, you know, they do shoot to kill. 
Absolutely. We were trained to do that, to shoot to kill with one shot. And uh, anyway, it went to trial. It was a four-week or three-week-long trial. And uh, he was found guilty of two of the three charges. One was, uh, let's see here. Let's make sure I tell you the correct. He was uh, convicted of murder and manslaughter. And they took him into custody immediately, which I, last week I predicted that he would not be found guilty. And I agreed with you. Yes. And so now he has been found guilty. And I don't know, um, I just really like what the guy, her fiancé said to the media uh, after, the, after it. And I can link this to you, Grim. And it, uh. it's pretty good what he says. Um, it's about time that these cops start getting busted and start, you know, come on. This lady was in her pajamas. She was not a threat. She was unarmed. It's it's time for these pigs that are murdering these unarmed people out there to fucking be held accountable. Absolutely. I mean, enough is enough. This is ridiculous. You know, I understand, you know, it's a hard job, whatever. And you, you know, people call nine one one, and cops respond to these these locations, and you you don't know what you're gonna find, you know, yeah. you don't know what kind of situation you're coming into. But seriously, why would the woman that called nine one one be a threat to you? She was coming up to the car to talk to you, right? And you fucking shoot her. So he had to reach across his partner to shoot the gun. And he said he thought, okay, his excuse was he thought that his partner was in fear because his partner was having trouble unholstering his gun. I guarantee you, his partner was not trying to unholster his gun because the lady's standing outside in her fucking pajamas. Okay, right. why would you want to unholster your gun with this woman standing in her, in, in her driveway in her pajamas? Yeah, no, um, that, that's abs absolutely. Uh... But anyway, the good news is he was found guilty. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to play that video when it, when it says Justine Damon's family speaks out. I really like what the guy said. All right, let me get it up here then. Yeah, yeah because he's like, you know, this is it's time for this. It's time, you know, you you can't have these. Trigger happy cops just running out there shooting unarmed people and killing them. I mean, this woman was not a criminal in any way, shape, or form. Right. She was, you know, calling. To, she was being a good citizen and calling nine one one to help somebody else out that she thought was being attacked in her alley. Right. She ends up dead because she called nine one one. A lot of people do. That's ridiculous. Okay. Right. So I don't know if you want to play that, Graham, but I really like his speech. Yeah, I'm just trying to oh, get okay. it on the yeah. screen here. And it's, it's, uh, it's quite larger than whatever I had lined up. Yeah, it is. Before. Sorry about that. That's all right. It's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, but it's... Uh, I really like what he says here. Um, because it, it it's it, it's time. They yeah. need to have some kind of fear in them that, you know, if they murder somebody in cold blood that's unarmed, they might be found guilty of murder for that. They need to fuck... This needs to happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty small might, but yeah, it's, they might be. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I've almost got it. Okay, I see you. It, 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 it's not that easy. Adjusting. Yeah. But it, I just... He, he, the guy makes a lot of sense, and it's uh, it's right. time for changes. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see what okay. he's got to say here. Okay. All right. We believe he was properly charged with a crime. The jury has returned a verdict of guilty on murder three and manslaughter two. We are satisfied with the outcome. The jury's decision reflects the community's commitment to three important pillars of a civil society. The rule of law, 
the respect for the sanctity of life and the obligation of the police force to serve and protect. We believe this guilty verdict strengthens those pillars. We hope this will be a catalyst for further change. We would like to note that we believe the conviction was reached despite the active resistance of a number of Minneapolis officers, including the head of their union, and either active resistance or gross incompetence of the BCA, particularly at the beginning of the investigation. Nearly two years ago, my fiance, Justine Ruschek Damon, was shot dead in her pajamas outside our home without warning as she walked up to a police car, which she had summoned. Ironically, the Minneapolis Police Department emblem on the squad door reads, to protect with courage and to serve with compassion. Where were these values that night? But that night there was a tragic lapse of care and complete disregard for the sanctity of life. The evidence in this case clearly showed an egregious failure of the Minneapolis Police Department. I implore the Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry and Police Chief Medaria Arredondo to do everything they can to ensure that these essential human values are not just words on a car door, but are lived values of every person in the police department who need a complete transformation of policing in Minneapolis and around the country. We want to know the reason why she was shot. All right. Um, yeah, that's good stuff. You there? Hello, hello, hello. Yep, yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. good. Good on him. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it says to protect and serve with compassion. There was no compassion that night. There certainly there was, was no, not. It was just a stupid, senseless thing that it happened. She should not have been shot and killed. Um. You know, and, and, and even the lawyer says there was resistance from the police force themselves, the resi resistance from the police union, there was resistance from the police chief to try to get this guy not convicted. And this is what they do all the time. Well, it didn't work this time. Thin blue line or the thick blue line is wasn't thi what was thin instead of thick in this case, right? Because they couldn't fucking they could they, they couldn't whatever reason they gave for this woman being killed that night was not, made no sense at all. It made no sense at all. No. Well, they, ne they never make sense, you know. They all, all kinds of those ones, and you hear about them, and it, it's always just some crazy stuff. Right. Right. And, uh, and they and they just walk. They just walk, you know. They get a, they well, get a paid vacation and then they walk. I yeah. hope that this changes things. I don't. I'm not counting on it. But oh um, no, it won't change. I mean, as far as the wider picture goes, I, I don't. Right. Think, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah, maybe Minneapolis, but Minneapolis has been notorious. I grew up there. Those cops are notori notorious for being dirty cops, just like every fucking. Cop. Oh, everywhere. Yeah, there are the dirty cops everywhere. Everywhere. No yeah, matter no, no. what city, what state, there was, no there was, matter. There was, there was a, there's been a story going this week here in, in New Mexico. Um, the uh, This guy that used to be the sheriff of Torrance County, my county, uh -huh. okay. um, and now he was a, a judge, uh, whatever you call him, some, some kind of judge, you know, whatever, judge of the county, one of the judges of the county. Um, anyway, so uh, apparently he embezzled a whole bunch of money from the county. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, great. So he's, he's kicked off his judge bench, whatever. But um, So he was the sheriff of the whole county, and then he's the, the judge in the, in the county, and he's got to steal more money from this county. We're a poor county. And, and um, so anyway, so, yeah, they're corrupt. They're all corrupt. Now, do you think whoever's going to step in and replace him is going to be any better? 
No. No. <laughs> no. Not at all. Yeah, no. Uh, so, and, and that's, you know, just the one thing. But what else did he do, you know, during all those years he was the sheriff? Right, exactly. And, uh, yeah. And I remember seeing people with all the, like, yard signs and stuff, vote this guy in. Right. <laughs> you know, it, people don't get it. They're just stupid. Yeah. They're just... We talk about this every week, too, but... I know, uh, I know. At least that woman's family is getting... This Damon woman's family is getting some compensation. Yeah, no, they got 20, 20 million. Yeah, but well, where's that money coming from? That's 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 coming from the taxpayers. Right, that's more stolen money. That's you know. Yes, it is. And, and yep. so, and the cops go into jail. Maybe, right. so maybe we, cops, ha we hasn't been he hasn't been sentenced yet, right? So not yet. No, so, so he could get a lighter sentence, but it said ten to sixteen years. He's going. Yeah. Well, let's hope. So, let's. Yeah. I mean. You know, it, it's pretty much over because he's been convicted, but... Uh, and how old was the cop? He's young. I don't know how old he was. Let's see here if it says... He's... he's he's. I don't know if he was... Born, he must have been born in Minnesota. Yeah. But he's Somalian. Yeah, well, he'll be out in five to eight years, you know. Probably for good behavior. Right, right. So he... And he'll live the rest of his life. That that woman's dead. That that her her husband. Oh, he's you know, he's infamous now. Yeah. Well, whatever. He's gonna he's go out and live the rest now. of it. He's gonna go out and live the rest of his life. Right, and she's not. Right. So. Yeah. She got shot down and killed by this yeah. motherfucker. Um, yep. So. And so it's like you know, dude. Let me find it. Let me go back. That's taken off the home page. Yeah. Uh, she was 40, the woman, and he, oh, what does it say? It doesn't say his age. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, it, no, it doesn't. He, but either way, no, he'll be out. 40. Oh, no, she was 40. Yeah, he'll, he'll be out in a few years. and. Yeah, he still has plenty of life left to live, and right. he's alive, so. And none of that $20 million comes out of his pocket. So. No, it does not. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah, you know it's still fucked up, but it's a, it's a good it's a step in the right direction, I guess. Oh right, I, I mean you know there have been other cops that have been convicted for doing terrible right. things, and I think that one in Texas is going to get uh, the the woman cop in Texas. She walked into the wrong apartment and killed oh, the guy. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think she's going to be convicted too. Oh, she even knew it too. After right after she did it, she's like, "My career's over. My life is over." It's like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think pretty she, much. I, I think she's going down for that, and she oh, should. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, that you walk into the wrong apartment and then shoot somebody in the dark. Right. <laughs> what? That's just awful. She, and she said, "Oh, I, mean, I thought I was on the third floor." Uh, it makes me really not want to call nine one one ever. Right, and in that particular no, case, I don't ever want to deal with them. In that, in that particular case, you know, the guy was just there at his house. He didn't call nobody. And the woman cops and walks in and kills him. Right, wrong apartment. That's yeah. why, and this happens all the time. I think about a couple months ago, we showed a video of these these cops, these SWAT team, that went in these people's house. It was the wrong fucking house. Totally traumatized the family. Right. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Oops, we had the wrong house. You know, they trashed the house. They, you know, they don't apologize. They just come in and track, trash your shit. And then, oh, it's the wrong house. Oops, sorry. Right. And they don't, and there's no, they don't give the people money for wrecking their shit. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Your kid I, has to go to fucking counseling now or something, you know. Yeah. I, I imagine there's some kind of recourse for financial Reimbursement on on situations uh, like that, no, but not as much as you would think. I, I don't I don't know I don't know how it works, but you would think there would be some. I mean, it, it's when they screw up like that, uh, they gotta they, they gotta pay. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. But, but I'm not sure. You know, I don't think it's appropriate comp compensation. Well, obviously not. I mean, they, they may pay for you know like. Material pro property damages, but they're 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 not going to pay for that kid's therapy. 
<laughs> right, exactly. No, stuff like that, you know. When, yeah. You know, or the, even the people themselves, the parents, you know. Right. I mean, I seriously, I'm not afraid, but I seriously, I do not want to call 911. Oh, never, never. Ever. I mean, I really don't. I mean, it's just, it's stupid. Right. So, anyway, um, RL, RLO is down? Yeah, it's down. Uh, hmm. Maybe Anthony's doing something. I don't know. There's been oh, okay. uh, the, the internet's been acting really weird today. Anyway, overall, oh really? Okay. Various places. I yeah, I, I talked about the uh, my, my banking place. The bill pay thing wasn't working for like 12 hours today when oh, I was really? trying to pay oh. my freaking bills. And <laughs> I log on to Twitter to to look it up, and all these people are just bitching up and down about. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta pay our bills. It's the beginning of the month. We can't right. pay, we can't pay our bills. Date, time for it to go down. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right. Well, on a on a totally different note, <laughs> this is a story that I had lined up for the first one here. Um, from RT dot com. Mm -hmm. From nuclear warheads to gravity tractors, how well are we prepared for an impending asteroid? Um, uh, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I just said. Oh, oh uh, Van Meter's got a, an article there. I'll have to check oh, that I one out. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, NASA launches an asteroid strike simulation this week. Asteroid strike simulation. So, you know, okay. well, 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 meaning nothing. Means, means nothing. But what would happen if a devastating asteroid was coming our way? Come on, asteroid. Oh, um, <laughs> RT asks an expert about the tools available and how long it will be until we're fully prepared. It says, while hundreds of small asteroids and meteorites have hit Earth, big objects like the 55-foot one that exploded over Chablonsk, Russia in 2013, remember that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they only occur around twice a century according to this. And larger dinosaur destroying ones are even less common, which is probably good. Um, yeah. <laughs> however, NASA warns that given the, the current incompleteness of the near Earth object, the NEO catalog, an unpredicted impact could occur at any time. <laughs> giant, as <laughs> giant asteroid right. 2020. I'm voting. For, I'm, I'm voting for the giant asteroid. All right. Um, I still have a bumper sticker on the back of my Jeep that says, uh, for 2016, uh, Giant Asteroid 2016 just ended already. <laughs> it says, at the start of 2019, NASA reported there, <laughs> NASA reported there were 19,000 known near-Earth asteroids with an average of 30 new ones found each week. Uh, that left Koscheny, I guess that's his name, co-manager of the Space Situational Awareness. Oh, shit! What? Damn it. <laughs> What's going on there? Dog, jumped on the fucking cord. Oh. <laughs> oh. Dang dog. Sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> anyway. Hey, well, I, I have my headsets on. My cord's sitting here, and he's trying to jump up on my leg, and he grabs the cords, and then he he hits the cord. He pulls like, the headsets are being pulled off my head. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Darn fur kids. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, Paul <laughs> Jackson. Where is he? So the uh, the N E the uh, S S A N E O segment of the European Space Agency told R T that it's not the large N E O S we need to worry about, though, but the smaller ones. As scientists are only aware of one percent or less of them. That means there's ninety nine per plus percent out there they don't even know about. No, they don't. And those could still damage any city or region. Ideal right, it's a crapshoot. They can't predict that. No, they have no idea. Uh, ideally, scientists hope to have several years. Hope. Hope to have several years of, word, war of warning uh, of an approaching NEO of a hundred meters or more. But when it comes to the smaller ones, it's more difficult to see them early on. Yeah, we hear about them all the time after the fact. 
Oh, yeah, this big asteroid just buzzed on by the Earth. Almost hit us. Sorry, guys, we didn't tell you about anything. Uh, not that they would tell you if they knew, but... Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> It says anything large, anything larger than fifty meters, we'd try to deflect. <laughs> try to deflect. <laughs> Kochdi said, pointing to NASA's <laughs> NASA's twenty 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 two double asteroid redirection test, the DART, uh, which aims to intercept an asteroid's moonlit when it gets within eleven million kilometers of Earth. Not that they have any way of getting to it. Uh, the, the hope is that it can change the speed of an asteroid via a kinetic impact like shooting nukes at it. Uh, unfortunately, deflection methods require a few years of preparation. And since we only know a couple of days ahead of time, well, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> and the correct spacecraft would need to be built. So they don't even have a, any way of getting it there. They have no spacecraft. No. Uh, the, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy released in 2018 report outlining a 10-year plan to prevent asteroids from any Earth. It involves creating modeling tools and simulations. So anything they could do on a computer, but you, anything I do on my computer is not going to stop an asteroid. Um, <laughs> plan, no. Planning reconnaissance missions. and <laughs> They're going to spy on the asteroids and developing technologies for fast response missions. In Europe, NEO Shield carries out a research and development uh, to reduce the risk of NEO detection uh, mission deflection mission failing, and has outlined several methods to prevent NEO causing damage. One proposal is a gravity tractor, which is an idea from a television show, um, which is insane, which involves positioning a heavy satellite close to the asteroid, which then pulls the asteroid away. Right. And it's, <laughs> it's a good method, Kochdi said, as scientists already know they can get satellites close to asteroids. Yeah, but they can't do anything. However, no. however, this kind of mission takes a long time, around 10 years. The asteroid's not going to set up there waiting for you. Meanwhile, using an ion engine to push an asteroid away has also been tabled, takes several years, and there are still some technical issues to understand, like, um, can we actually make it work? At the, uh, at the most extreme end of the intervention scale is a nuclear explosion, which scientists would detonate a warhead right beside the asteroid so that the space rock surface... Okay, and you have to understand, okay, the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki or 20 square miles or something like that. I'm going to mute for a second, Rim. What? I'm going to mute for a second. All right. And and these asteroids aren't going to care about your little nuclear explosion. They just are going to laugh at it, which would detonate a warhead right beside the asteroid so that the rock's surface is superheated and vaporized. Right. The, the vapor pressure then acts like a rocket rocket fuel uh, to move the asteroid and is the most effective method. However, it clearly has its disadvantages. Politically, it's not accepted because of the risk of the radioactive contamination that will occur uh, if the launcher failed or something went wrong, uh, which it would. <laughs> Standard explosives could also be used to shift the asteroid from its doom-bearing path, and another method involves embedding an explosive inside an asteroid, like the Hollywood movie Armageddon. <laughs> and then, so they're getting their ideas from science fiction movies on how to stop these asteroids. <laughs> Asked how long it would be before we are fully prepared to prevent any asteroid from any Earth, Cosney uh, said, if we continue taking this subject seriously, uh, well, there'll be 10, 20 years for objects up to a few hundred meters in size. <laughs> the answer is never. They will never be fully prepared. Uh, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, there's a story for you. I, I find it just quite so humorous that they are even uh, talking about this. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cowboy Tech is reporting in the chat. 
that reallliberty.org is back up and operational, and it's taken a little longer to uh, to uh, check for me, so I'm assuming he's correct. I'll just wait there. Yep, there it is. RLO is back up for y'all. And I see a Donna Van Meter post. All right. What is up with every... What is up with that? Every other day of the month is like 200 something. Something. What? What? What is this about? I don't know. What's this? Something about Friday, May 24th. I'm, I'm not seeing what, what. What? 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 Oh, it's something about a vacation or something. Uh, hmm, hmm. I don't know what's going on with that. Must be around a holiday or something. Okay. So uh, Van Meter, Donna Van Meter. Uh, also posted there in the chat while I was covering that last article, an article from Quora.com uh, of a topic we were discussing prior to that. It says, if the United States police, if a United States police department raids the wrong house and does a lot of damage, who pays? Uh, according to this guy... Okay. According to the first guy here in the Quora.com thing, Terry Denton, a truck driver, uh, who's a uh, truck driver mechanic... Chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> Says it most likely depends on what force you're talking about. The only U.S. police forces I can think of are federal marshals and FBI. Neither operate like a traditional local force. Most have state police force split into different agencies, such as Texas has the DPS that is mostly concerned with road safety, uh, but do other things as well. And the Texas Rangers, who would be the one kicking in your door, County sheriffs are technically state officers, but in the real world, they are a county force, and then comes into multiple police forces. There are a million other groups who act like police, uh, <laughs> act like police, yeah. with a narrow range of things. While I don't have personal experience, I know of people who have had damage done to their homes and vehicles and have never heard of any of them getting any of their things repaired. Uh, in one case, a couple allowed a daughter to move into a mobile home on their 40-acre farm. She was raided for drugs, and not only did they not repair... Oh, 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 I lost my spot there. Where'd it go? I don't know. I lost my spot. Uh, oh, not only repair anything, the government froze the old couple's bank account, bank account yeah. and attempted to seize the property and kicked what? them out of their house they had lived in for 50 years. Oh, my God. It cost them thousands just to keep their broken stuff. Oh, my God. In another case, the local drug force raided a guy's home and basically trashed the entire place, found absolutely nothing, and left him with it. Uh, yeah. Left it with him. Their raid was apparently based in rumors that had uh, found its way to an informant and little else. Oh, my God. In Dallas, a couple had their house raided, and despite the couple telling the SWAT team they could enter and see if the person they were looking for was there, they instead entered as if they were trying to cap capture a bunker in a war and did significant damage to the home and still found no suspect. The city refused to pay for damages, and a few of the SWAT members felt sorry for the old couple and came during their off hours to help with repair damage. But the city never paid a freaking dime. And the stories go on. There's a whole bunch of, uh, of, uh, of uh, stories, because this is like uh, people can, can write in their own stuff here. It's not actually an article. But, uh, yeah. Um, fuck them. I, I, these guys are bastards. And uh, so I, I guess they don't pay. I, maybe you'd have to actually sue them, I would assume. Um on that. So anyway, thanks for that, Donna. And uh you still there, Moose? All right. Well, we're going to play some music here. Um oh, Sorry, I haven't had the mute again. It, I, the dog is driving me fucking nuts. All right. Well, I'm going to play some, I'm going to play some tunes here. Okay. And we'll uh be back after these. So Well, I'm going to be afraid. I don't know why I do that. All right. Um, <laughs> I hit the wrong camera sometimes as it starts the video. Uh, <laughs> this is a guy by the name of Johnny Burnett. You may remember right. him if, if you're old enough. Ah, uh, yeah, a little Godsmack there for y'all. That's some nice stuff. Uh, covering the Beatles' Come Together. 
All right, so uh, that was great. Before that, Charlie Parr in a friendship session doing a song called Remember Me, If I Forget, and talking about them speedy-ass lazy boys. And we <laughs> kicked it off with some old-school rockabilly Johnny Birdnet doing Train Kept a Rolling. I, I was going to say doing Aerosmith's Train Kept a Rolling, but obviously... That's a cover as well. Aerosmith covered Johnny Burnett. Everybody covered Johnny Burnett. <laughs> yes. A lot of people have done that song, but he was the he wrote the song in, in uh yeah. So uh, excellent stuff there. Uh, and uh yeah, yeah, good stuff. All right. So uh, Okay, so I don't know if there's any Game of Thrones fans out there. Uh you, I know you are. I am. <laughs> um, but I was just I'm not gonna give away anything on the storyline or anything like that. I'm just gonna say I was watching it online. Okay. And it was so freaking dark that I couldn't freaking see half of it. So I'm thinking, okay, well, let's brighten up the screen, you know, which I still have to look up online to see how to actually do this with these new monitors, which it, it, it's frustrating, okay? Yeah. I know how to move up and down, but I don't know how to left, move left and right. But anyway, that's another problem. But I was just <laughs> going to say, a bunch of people, so here... I'm thinking that I missed a bunch of the show because it's all dark and I can hardly see it because I'm watching it online, right? Yeah. On Amazon. And uh, so then the next day I see all this these stories of how people were, were bitching because it was so dark you couldn't fucking see anything. Okay. And I'm like, okay, good. That wasn't just me, right? Right, right. <laughs> and then I'm talking to someone at the bar. I'm like... Do you are you Game of Thrones? He's like, no, not really. But I watched the the Battle of Winterfell. I'm like, okay. And so uh, I'm like, could you see anything? He's like, hardly. You know. Uh, okay. And I'm like, okay, good. Well, anyway, so now I was cruising YouTube or looking at YouTube here, and huh. now they have a lightened version of the fin this last latest episode. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna just I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I can post it in case there's any fans, but um, it's the most recent episode of the series, so um, and it's the last, final season. Oh, but it... um, I can't believe it's been like eight seasons of this show. Really? It's just weird. Yeah, it's weird. Oh. Yeah, that it's been eight. But because um, my kids, I mean, that was, I mean, my kids are nineteen. So, I mean, I started watching this show when they were 11. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I had no That's idea. That's weird, you know. But uh, anyway, there was that. But as Charlie Parr was talking about in the uh, video, uh, people, it, it seems like it's weird because it happens like every, it seems like it happens a lot uh, with these Drunks driving lawnmowers or doing other <laughs> weird shit. <laughs> Are you going to talk about this bear story? Or? Oh yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, well you can talk, tell about finish your what you're talking about, but yeah. Oh, but anyway, it's just funny that you know people. Okay, so I I've told my kids um this before. I'm like drinking and any mechanical thing do not mix. <laughs> Generally like, a bad idea. Don't try to fucking. <laughs> Swim or if I, not even not even mechanical. Don't try to do things like swimming when you're drunk, or operate any kind of machinery if you've been drinking. You know what I mean? Or possess have a possession of a gun or something. You know what I mean? Don't, don't even try. And, don't don't even try and cook food when you're. Right. Don't even try to. I mean, maybe a pizza, but you know what happens when you try to cook a pizza and you're drunk? You you're, forget about it. And right. you love it. Because <laughs> you fucking passed out. <laughs> I've done that. I did that one time in my life. One yeah. time. Yeah. But it's uh that was that was like when I was like twenty one. But anyway, um I was just uh if you look on YouTube you'll find all these uh these O W I I looked up lawnmower O W I but anyway I, I found this one on that same this one popped up. And this apparently this guy apparently was drunk and high at work on a scissor lift. <laughs> 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 not a good not a good thing to do. Oh, it's easy. All right. 
anyway, um, the bear story, yeah, I just thought that was cute because um, this black bear in Tennessee was found in these people's hot tub on their deck. And he's looking like he's just in there, you know, like a tourist. Yeah, you know, he's, he's like, like Hey, I'm going to do a hot tub. Bring, I can bring, go for that. Bring me a margarita. <laughs> right. He looks like he's ready for one. <laughs> yeah, he's just kicking back there. <laughs> this is in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. <laughs> anyway, um, they're coming out of hibernation now. Yeah. And, it, you, know, and, and you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but, you know, it's always good information. You know, do you know how to react when you see a bear, Graham? Uh, yeah, go up and shake his hand and say, how the hell are you doing? No, it's not Smokey Bear. It's, uh, okay, so it's what they're saying, Yogi. according to the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, is never feed or approach bears. That's kind of like a given. You're right. If a bear approaches you in the wild, it's probably trying to assess your presence, like it's trying to sniff you, trying to smell it, you know. Right. Not that he's going to come up to you and smell you. If that happens, you're fucking toast. <laughs> uh, if you see a black bear from a distance after your route of travel, return the way you came or wait until it leaves the area. So basically, leave the way you came in. Right. Uh, make your presence known by yelling and shouting at the bear in an attempt to scare it away. If approached by a bear, stand your ground, raise your arms to appear larger, yell and throw rocks or sticks until it leaves the area. When camping in bear country, keep all food stored in a vehicle or in a suspended bear-proof box and away from tents. Never right, run from a black right. bear. This will often trigger its natural instinct to chase. If a black bear attacks, fights back aggressively. No, if a black bear attacks, fight black back aggressively and do not play dead. Use pepper spray, sticks, rocks, or anything you can find to defend yourself. If cornered and or threatened, bears may slap the ground, pop their jaws, or huff as a warning. If you see these behaviors, you are too close. Slowly back away while facing the bear at all times. Okay, now those are good things to know. Yeah. Because you, okay, so people think that bears are slow. Bears are not that? slow. No, bears are not slow. <laughs> bears can run at least 30 miles per hour. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they're much faster than you are. <laughs> yes, they can outrun your ass, all right? Yeah. So if you think that because they're big and they look like they're slow, that they're slow, think again, because they are not. They can run 30 miles per hour. Right, okay? yeah. All right, so think about that. And, and, and so just basically it's common sense. I mean, when we used to go up to the Boundary Waters or go up camping, we always had our food in a car or in a I, – when I went to the BC, BWCA, we had to put it up in the trees. Like you have to put your coolers – you have to literally hang up your stuff because the bears will come and get it. Even if it's in a cooler, they'll come and get it. Right. Yeah, that's – Go for the snout, you bet. Big old punch if you can or something, or get a stick. But like that said, the worst thing you can do in that situation is play dead. Well, I, I, think, I, I think I think for a lot of people here, probably you especially, um, mm -hmm. you'll be out there walking along the trail. Right. You're, you're probably smoking a dube or something. Just blow that smoke in his face, and, and he'll chill right. out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, hey. but generally, they don't want. Generally, especially for black bears, yeah, they're pretty. You know, they're not gonna really fuck with you unless it's a mama with babies, or you really fucking. Um, if you're being a dick. If you're being a dick to it, yeah, right. Otherwise, they're gonna just leave you alone. They're, yeah. you know what I mean. But it's still good to know. Like when we went to the when I went to the BWCA, it's rural up there. I mean, it's pack you. you you pack out everything that you pack in, basically. Right, right. There's no garbage cans up there. There's no, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so, and that. it's bear country, and it's moose country, and you have to be aware of bears, especially, and this sounds really weird, but if, a woman that is during their period, you oh. really shouldn't be camping. No. In a, in the BWC. Yeah, they they can smell the period. blood. They can definitely smell the blood. Because they can smell that blood, yeah. and they will, they will smell that blood from a mile away. And I just look at that guy, though. He yeah. looks so cool, man. It's a, it's a cool bear. That is a cool bear just chilling in the hot tub. I think that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's great. I've been to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's a pretty cool place. I love it. It's right in the Smoky Mountains. And they, so, obviously, they have a ton of black bears there. Yeah, yeah. Like, they have a lot of them there. Right. Um, but, anyway, uh, that was pretty cute, I thought. But, 
it's still good information the bear um how to react you know if you come in contact with them with one of them and especially if you see a mama with babies get the fuck out of there just get the fuck out <laughs> you know it might look cute but you might want to take a picture you know unless you're in your house and they're in your backyard don't take a picture get the fuck out right that's what I would say yeah but yeah um they're not docile though let's see that's a mistake people make that's why people think they can outrun a bear you can't because they look big and they look like they're slow they're not they can run 30 miles per hour yeah so anyway, and then I mean, when we went to the BWCA, it's weird because you have to plan to put your food in the air. So you have to bring the ropes and everything, and you have to, you know, walk, know how to do it. You know what I mean? Sure. It's pretty simple. It's not hard. It's just you know simple physics, really. But um, it's just something that you have to um, be aware of, depending on where you are at the, you know. At t- in the time <laughs> that you were at, you know. Right. We right. don't see many here in the city of Eau Claire. We have more deer here in the city than we do bear. But I have seen, I think in the four years that I worked in Mondovi, I saw one bear, one black bear on the side of the road just walking. He was like along the fen- the, the tree line. Right. But uh, we do have them. They're in the country, though, mostly. Yeah. And in the for- in the woods, you know. Sure, sure. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. There's that. All right. Well, here's this about that. It's about something else. About something else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> where, where the hell's Goober? I, I see Hans joined. Hey, Hans. Uh, but... Yeah, he was here earlier, I think. Okay. I think he's, I don't know where he is. Who knows? But. All right. From the economic for Foundation for Economic Education, fee, uh, fee.org. The fear mongers are wrong about artificial intelligence and robots. Says it seems unlikely that their new argument about AI induced mass unemployment will turn out to be the silver bullet they are hoping for. Uh, to thanks to recent efforts by of such figures as Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang, never heard of him, and British Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell, never heard of him. Uh, The issue of universal basic income, UBI, as they're phrasing it, has been back at the forefront of the public discussion on economic issues, along with various arguments and justifications for introducing such a policy. While many of these justifications have become quite familiar over the years of waxing and waning interest in UBI, it is interesting to note that the recent surge of interest is in one particular argument which sounds more like something from a sci-fi novel than an economic textbook. The argument runs roughly as follows. In the not-too-distant future, rapidly advancing technology will allow robots and AI to perform many of the jobs now being done by you lowly human tax slaves, and to do so more cheaply and efficiently than humans ever could. This will result in robots, AI, replacing humans in almost all jobs making the vast majority of people permanently unemployed and without universal basic income, how will they be able to keep food on their tables? Of course, that idea uh, that advances in labor-saving technology will lead to catastrophic unemployment and declining living standards is hardly new, arguably dating back to ancient Greece or earlier, and economists, not to mention the facts of history, have been refuting the idea for nearly as long as economics has existed as a self-conscious science. However, as familiar as the general Luddite tone of uh, this new argument for UBI may seem on its surface, nevertheless does have one key difference from the more traditional arguments against labor-saving technology arguments. Uh, uh, This difference not only sets the new AI scaremongering argument apart as a meaningful, meaningfully different than the arguments that have gone before, but also highlights the fundamental misunderstanding of its proponents uh, that its proponents suffer from concerning the very nature of what the market economy is 
and what drives it. Of course, they're not really interested in the market economy. They're only interested in saying, oh, we're going to give you all free money forever because, you know, robots and AI, they're going to put you out of work and you're not going to be able to survive in, unless you vote us in and allow you to have free money for the rest of your lives coming from unknown yeah. unknown sources. Um, <laughs> all right. When the uh, <laughs> w w what marks the a, 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 what oh I already read that part uh, when the spinning jenny was introduced in the 1760s, mm -hmm. they may have argued that it would cause unemployment in the textiles industry, but none of them would have claimed that the same machine caused mass unemployment among butchers, lawyers, pub landlords. When automobiles became widely available. Um, mm -hmm. They may have argued that buggy whip manufacturers were at risk of permanent impoverishment, which, well, they were. Um, yeah. <laughs> because you don't need a buggy whip for your no. car. Um, <laughs> um, but They uh, probably made other stuff, though. I mean, if they made buggy whips, they probably made other stuff besides buggy whips. Uh, maybe. maybe some, of them, some of them, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, but few would have argued that the existence of cars posed an equal threat to jobs of teachers, waitresses, or doctors. However, given the near total lack of public understanding of what AI actually is and what it's capable of, not to mention the irresistible temptation to sensationalize modern scientific advances into eye-grabbing and alarmist headlines, the new AI scaremongers have allowed their imaginations to run wild. Yeah, imagine that. Um, <laughs> when speculating as to which jobs are under threat from the mysterious new technology, the result is that they, and much of the public, seem to believe that AI is, or soon will be, capable of almost anything they can imagine, in the same way that so many charming naive 80s movies portrayed you know, home computers as essentially omnipotent science magic. <laughs> <laughs> it Weren't is, they wrong there? <clears throat> no, to a degree. Uh, it is this assumption that AI and robots will soon be able to accomplish almost all jobs more cheaply and efficiently than humans. All? Every job uh, in the well, world? That, that, no, that, I disagree. Yeah, well, of course. Uh, that that uh, more than humans that marks the new AI scaremongering argument as fundamentally different from the previous arguments against labor-saving technology. Economists had previously been able to argue that labor-saving technology frees up resources and lowers prices in a way that results in a net quality of life improvement for society as a whole. Absolutely. Uh, creating new jobs and opening up new types of industry, even if it results in short-term unemployment for a small minority. But what that really would still be, would that really still be the case, if the new technology is capable of making human labor obsolete in all types of jobs? Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll let you read through this, but you have to understand that there's certain things that you may think there's there's certain jobs that robots are never going to be able to do. No, no, uh, of they're course not, not. They're not going to come in and fix your plumbing. They're they're no. They're not going to be able to to to. I'd say they wouldn't be able to build furniture. They'll be able to build build furniture, but they won't right. be carpenters. They won't be master carpenters. No, no. Uh, there, there won't be any of the trades that no. that are out there right now. Uh, right. Which, no, by no, the way, right. and and as you mentioned, you you were thinking of telling Matt. To go to a trade school, right? Yes, yes, well, there's, correct. There, there's there's a trend going that direction now. Yes, after there all is. There should be. After all these years of pushing everybody in into college, go to college, go to college, go to four-year college, go to four -year college, the, the university. Yeah, they're, they're running out of tradespeople. Yes, uh, they are. That's uh, because that's the reason because uh, they've been telling everybody, "Oh, you got to go to college." You gotta, you know, right. It's just like whatever people, you guys are your ass backwards because college isn't for everybody. There's a need for tradespeople. Absolutely, yes. I absolutely. mean, we have to have people like that. Yeah. So, Otherwise, we're fucked. Anyway, car good, mechanics. This this is a good article that talks about the fact that um, the UBI is a freaking pipe dream to begin with. I mean, you can't. <laughs> right. You got to have money flowing in in order to have it flowing out. Exactly. Uh, and, and and if if all if they're giving free money to everybody. Um, 
then where's the money coming from for, for to, to 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 fund it? It's not there, and no. also the fact that people, you, I, everybody else out there, <laughs> if yeah. you come up with an idea, you want to start a new business, right. a, a new yeah. uh, product, whatever. Yeah. The robots, the AIs, they're not going to do that. No, they're not. So unless everything's going to be frozen at the point when this UBI kicks in, which, of course, it's not going to in the first place, um, <laughs> right. then, then it, it's just, it's, it is it's fear-mongering. It's nonsense. Yes, it is. And, and, and also, I want to point out that being a parent, yeah, no AI can replace that. Well, what about Rosie? Rosie the robot? Yeah. From 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 the Jetsons. From Jetsons? Yeah. yeah, but still, you can't replace. You, you can't. No, no. You, 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 and I was going to say, parenting, being a parent, is a job. Okay. So yeah. when they say all jobs, they're incorrect. Oh, yeah, they're way incorrect. Because being a parent is a freaking job. No, but okay. but it, but but you can't sensationalize without being an absolutist. Right. Wait, you can. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was I was being absolutist in my my sensationalist <laughs> statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, it is fear mongering. Uh, yeah, there's, there's no question about I mean, it. And it's and total, it's, it's, know, it's and just like a people, so. Some know. people eat it right up because they're they're into the whole AI thing, and they're all like, "Oh my God." It, Robots are replacing people, and they're, like, freaking the fuck out. It's it's a socialist pipe like, dream. You're buying into the, the freaking hype, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know, and these people, you know, and we have a couple of people around here that, like, and still eat up the mainstream media like it's the fucking truth. I know, I know. And, um... It, it, it's you guys. I don't know what to say, but uh, I would just suggest not watching mainstream media ever. <laughs> right. And so then Trump says something stupid today. I heard just on the news coming home from work, which I didn't give a fuck. I usually don't pay fucking attention. Uh huh. Um, too much of what he says. Anyway, he said a couple of things. Okay. The first thing he said was along the lines of. Finally, the mainstream media is getting involved. It's like, really, dude? The mainstream media? Are you fucking kidding me? Getting dude? involved in what? In this whole Russia thing and saying that he was there was no collusion and all this shit. Okay. You know, and that was a quote that they said on the news. It was like one of these news words on the radio. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then now he has said. Uh, we have what's known as freedom of speech. Do we? Yeah. This is what he said. <laughs> okay. We, now, we have what's known as freedom of speech. Outrage Trump says he is closely monitoring social media sites for bias against conservatives after Facebook bans several far-right figures from their platform. Oh, All right. No. Yeah. Oh, no. So he's monitoring it, but he ain't doing nothing about it. No, he's... he's All, right. <laughs> All right. Well, on a uh, lighter topic... Okay. Did, did, did you ever watch um, the uh, Star Wars movies? Which, the originals? Well, yeah, whatever, any of them. Yes, I've watched several of the Star Wars movies. Okay. I, I saw the first three, and I think the... Me too. The, the second three... I'll never forget the first one. But, but never, I, that I, was I, the I best one, it. in my opinion, I, because yeah. that was the first one. Yeah, absolutely. And at that in point, in '76 or whatever, right? It was. Yeah, there was there was nothing like that back then. Right. So, uh, so I wanted to ask you, and and it's pretty simple for women, I think, because mm -hmm. there was only one. But Princess if Leia? you, yeah, if you related to any of the um, characters in in the Star Wars movies. Um, and like I said, for women, it's it's probably fairly simple. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I mean, I just related, I guess, the whole thing. Like, I was, well, 76. If that, was that when it came out? 77, I think. 77. I was 11 years old. Yeah. So, at that point in time, it wasn't, I wasn't, my brain was still developing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But right. it wasn't like, but I did relate to a lot of things in that show. Sure. I remember that, you know, feeling that way. Okay. Well, I hadn't really thought about it ever, but 
um, yesterday, the guy, the actor that played Chewbacca... Died. Yeah, his name is Peter Mayhew. He died. Yep. And, I, and, I, and, and I thought about it. I was like, well, if I was personally going to relate to any character in the Star Wars movie... It'd be Chewbacca. <laughs> it'd be Chewbacca. I'm a freaking right. Chewbacca, man. Um, <laughs> right. Arr. Yeah, no, no, no joke about it. You know, he... He didn't really want to be yep. bothered with anything. He didn't, he didn't talk much. He just kind of... He was a helper. He, he did it. He, he, him and Han Solo were buddies. Yeah, he did his job. And, he did. And you he, know, he was a trooper. Um, and he was funny. Yeah, he, he stuck by himself. Uh, right. Unless he was needed to, to come in and do something. Yeah, and, and see, the thing about Peter Mayhew, the actor that played him, he was 7'3". Yeah. So there was no heels. He didn't wear heels. He was actually that tall. Yeah, he was, he was a big-ass dude. 7'3". That's <laughs> tall. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, I mean, it was a good... I just loved him. I thought he was the funny. I remember seeing him because I was 11 when I saw it the first time, right? Right, right. So I was all into the Chewbacca and the R2-D2 and the C-3PO. You know, I thought they were cute. You know what I mean? Sure, then sure. Then he had those little fucking... Wookie things, those little teddy bear looking things, or not yeah, Wookiees, yeah, they call those little teddy bear looking I things. I don't know. I'm... Yeah, but they were really cute. Like that was I, I, I enjoyed the movies, but they were never like I was never a Star Warsian person. I don't know what to yeah, call. Yeah, me either. What I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't watch the movies, but I didn't have like posters or anything. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, I, I didn't have any. Yeah, that stuff. I, of course, I, I was. Mean, I didn't collect. I didn't do the Star know. Wars figures or anything. A lot of people would collect those. I was. I was. Funny, the original ones are yeah. funny. But... Yeah, I was 17 when the movies came out, so... Oh, you know. yeah, so you were on the older side. Yeah, so... Uh, anyway, so uh, I just thought I'd play a little clip here yeah. of the uh, Chewbacca's best moments. Right, because, you know, R.I.P., man. Yeah, man, because, I mean, it's a huge part of American culture. It is. Brought us um, a lot of joy. The, the Star um, Wars movie. Anyway, I always thought Chewbacca was really funny. Yeah, and, and like I said, you know... A good guy, always. Is. Yeah. You know, so I'm sure other people, you know, related themselves to Han Solo or Luke right. Skywalker or Darth, or Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> but not me. I, I, was, I was never, you know, I couldn't. Right. You know, those, those, I did uh, like Luke, Luke Skywalker. He was cute. Okay. Back so, in the day. He was. He was cute. So, but... so, you, so you never saw Corvette Summer? No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dork. It's stupid movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, unfortunately, I saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So here we go. Uh, rest in peace, Mr. Peter Mayhew. I never even yeah. knew your name until yesterday. Um, I, I, I had heard it before, but then, I, you know, it was one of, you don't remember, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right. Enjoy it, everyone. We'll be back. Rip, Chewy. Yeah. All right, P-Man. Ah, yes, Judas Priest at the US Festival back in 1983. They're doing Electric Eye. And now that song has come true. Yes, there's the eye in the sky watching you. And before that, we had the Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band doing Devils Look Like Angels. And we kicked it off there with the Chewbacca's Best Moments from the various Star Wars movies. Rest in peace, Chewbacca. We, uh... Gonna miss you, I guess. So, uh, anyway, hooray for all that. Um, yeah, drama levels. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how the neighbor yeah. is, uh, Flash, but uh, hopefully everybody's all right. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, hard to say. If you're old, though, you know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know that guy was old when I moved in when I first met him, and uh, so he's 14 years older now. Um, yeah. Or if he's still around. So, right. Right, yeah. It sounds like it was probably a death, but you never know. But right, I, you know, it could have been a multiples of things that... Right, that, right. ...that it happened and, yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe just a heart attack and he's all right. I, I, yeah, that could be too. Yeah. You never know. Right, so... But, uh, yeah. Um, so, people that... Like I get, I get the point when people say, "Oh, you gotta stop feeding the bees," you, you know. What but feeding the bees? The beast. Oh, the, the beast. Beast. The beast. 
bees. Not the bees. The bees. <laughs> The bee is what we call government or whatever you want to define it as. You know what I mean? It's like, it's easier said than done, for one thing. They don't want people off the grid. I mean, your choices are limited. They are. You, know, you, 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 you could go live in San Francisco and take a shit on the street. I mean, you know, that doesn't sound like fun to me. No, I, I don't want to live in a shit you know, town. Uh, no, or I don't want to, you know, have, take a shit on the street. You know, that would suck. Exactly. Yeah, I, I know, Flash. I, I'm I'm kind of curious myself, but uh, I, don't, I don't know how I'm going to find out unless it's in the paper. Uh, right, I, I do right. I do have a uh, alerts thing set up, news alerts thing set up, so I get an email when, some, when Moriarty pops up in the news somewhere. Yeah. And it's generally, almost always, about this town. Sometimes it's about some actor named Moriarty. <laughs> <laughs> it's never about Sherlock Holmes, though. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, but anyway, I mean, I'm, my, I guess my point is, is like I raised kids for 18 years or whatever. I had to fucking play the game to a certain point because I sure as hell wasn't gonna fucking be homeless in some van down by the fucking river, I'm trying to raise kids, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could be so a. Motor- I had to play the game. You have to. I had to work a real job. But, but when I say real job, I mean I, you know, if, one of their jobs. If you did live in a van down by the river, you could be a motivational speaker. Right. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's like people talk. Oh, well, we, you know, and yes, if we did stop feeding one part of them in mass, like a. A lot of people. Okay, let's say a million people, for instance, tried just decided to stop uh, buying, renewing their license plate tabs and renewing their driver's licenses. Uh huh. Okay. Because to me, the DMV is a useless fucking eater. Oh, okay. I have a story about the DMV. They're a useless fucking eater. That you know, and now this year, I had to pay my normal tab fee. And a thirty-dollar wheel tax. So it was a hundred and twenty-five dollars for me to renew my fucking license plate for one year. Okay. How much? One hundred and twenty-five dollars, because I was—it was a ten-dollar late fee. Uh, okay, yeah, mine are, mine are a uh, hundred bucks for every two years. See, that's that's not that bad. But now the, the governor, the the last governor we had before he fucking got ousted, he decided to enact this wheel tax, and this new governor governor backed it up. It's like you know what? Okay, if that's the case, I should not have potholes on my fucking roads then. Like my road here that I go down, it's it's two blocks up, and it's the road I turn down all the time to come to my house. You know what I mean? Right. It's my normal route. One of my normal routes. Right. It's fucking potholes. Not deep ones, but bad enough where they're getting going to get worse. You know what I mean? And I get it. There's a lot of streets in this town, but it's like, come on. You know, they fill in the ones on the main drags that get really bad. Yeah. But even so, you know, you're driving in normal areas, and all of a sudden you'll hit a pothole. And they'll be like, oh, great. Yeah. You know, there goes there goes another car repair, you know, right, or whatever. Right. It's like, if I'm going to pay some fucking wheel tax, then roads better be fucking pristine, dude. Well, listen, listen to this story. This is out of New Mexico. Okay. And they call it the MVD here. Okay. Motor that Vehicle is, Division or some shit. Yeah, department. Yeah. Okay. MVD, computer glitch, causes an error in renewal notice amount. Which way do you think it went? In favor of the people people or in favor of the government? They were in favor of the government. <laughs> Thousands of residents received renewal notices oh. with errors from the New Mexico Motor Vehicle Division. Officials with the MVD said a glitch in the computer system caused an additional digit in renewal notices. <laughs> Meaning, if you had a $50 renewal, Suddenly, it was five hundred dollars. What? <laughs> oh my God! You got to kid me. There's, there's a computer error caused incorrect fee totals to be included on ninety-one thousand seven hundred eighty registration renewal postcards mailed to customers, 
MVD director Alicia Ortiz said, an erroneous additional zero, oh, zero, it's nothing, uh, oh my God. was included in the amount due. The yes. MVD said, staff is working to correct the error, and affected customers will not have to pay the inaccurate fees. Oh, my God. If the office said, if anyone who pay, overpaid will be refunded. <laughs> So suddenly you're sitting there, you know, go to your your mailbox and you come back and what the hell is five hundred bucks? <laughs> right, I'd be freaking out. I'd be like calling right up. I'd be like, hello. Yeah, hey there, sir. Um, <laughs> hey, sir. Yeah, so that, yeah, I saw about that freaking baby sea lion. Oh, how did that? It's that like, was not the article I posted. <laughs> was, <laughs> the hell, man. Okay, <laughs> it's it's one of those stupid sites where. When you scroll down, it goes to a different story. Right, I hate that, yeah. Yeah. Shut up. That's all right. Yeah, I can't get back to the other one now. Oh, yeah. I hate that. Oh, I, oh, I have it over here in this part. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's already pa pasted into my, my notes. Uh, that, that was yeah. not, that was, I had no interest in that BBC Land story. All right. Um, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> But I do have an ocean story here for you. All right. From New Scientist, and although it only gives you a tiny bit of the story because they want you to pay. Um, of course. Uh, I thought this little bit would be interesting enough. New, okay. NewScientist.com. U.S. Navy tests underwater robots that recharge by eating fish shit. Or it says feces here, but <laughs> yeah. So, underwater robots could get their batteries recharged by munching the seafloor. A device created by the U.S. Navy extracts electrical energy from layers of fish feces and other organic matter to provide an endless source of power. All underwater devices have fundamental limitation, battery life. They are incredibly useful, useful for exploring and monitoring the depths, but once their power reserve starts to run low, there's no choice but to bring them to the surface or abandon them. Right, right. So the, this uh, new approach solving this is microbial fuel cells. Okay. And that, that's all we get. And then it says, do you want to keep reading, pay money. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. That's really <laughs> which, of course, I'm not going to do. No, um, no. <laughs> so. Hell no. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Do you not? What? No, I, I, that, I don't know how I scrolled down on the... On on the MVD article, and that stupid baby sea lion thing came up. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, guys. but that poor thing. People are so dumb. We talk about this every once in a while. Last year, it was the fucking people took a goddamn baby buffalo, put it in their vehicle. Like, thought they were rescuing it. It's like, duh, you're stupid. You're taking, what? They right. don't need rescuing. <laughs> so, you know, what are you going to do with the baby sea lion? Take it home and have it be your pet? No, dude, come on, you're a moron. Yeah. Wild animals belong in the fucking wild, goddammit. It's like, come on, people. Yeah. yeah, they're cute, they look like a dog face. Their their face looks like a, dog, a puppy, you know, but, you know, it's a sea lion. Right. They need to live in the sea. So, sea lion, S-E-A lion, a, a sea lion. It's a it's wild like a freaking lion. animal. It belongs in the water in the ocean, okay? <laughs> Leave it there, and it will be fine. If you fuck with it and bring it home, it's going to fucking die. Yeah. It's like, people, are you fucking stupid? Yes, yes they are. I know. Yes, yes. I know that. <laughs> and you know what really pisses me off? What's that? This is like, I mean, like, I should be a stand-up comedian, because I could just go up there and just bitch about everything that pisses me off. Oh. People that don't use their fucking blanker. Oh. They're turning signal. Yeah. It's like, if you're fucking turning... Turn your fucking blinker on. Right. You know? It's like, I was waiting at, waiting at a stop sign, and this guy's coming down the, the street, you know, mm. and I'm trying to take a left, and he's coming from the left of me. So he's got the right away, you know, I'm waiting, waiting at the stop sign for him mm -hmm. to go by. Mm -hmm. What does he do? He takes a left, or I mean a right, with no blinker on. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you fucking just wasted like 40 seconds of my life. By not using your goddamn blinker. Right. I was pissed. I started bitching at the guy. I'm like, use your goddamn blinker! 
<laughs> I'm bad, dude, in the car. Oh, my God. I'm bad. I am bad. I'll bitch at people so bad in the Miss, car. Miss Road Rage. Road Rage. You can, you can tell stupid-ass drivers, though. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. You can tell. They'll be on their cell phone or whatever or just not paying attention at all or just a crappy driver in general. Right. It's like, pay attention when you're driving. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's a fucking... It, it, most vehicles weigh a lot. You know, you're you're operating this vehicle, and the last thing you should be doing is doing anything but driving. Right. Which it seems like, you know, and I see this one guy, he's like, trying to drive with one hand, and there's a, in his left hand he's got a cell phone, he's like leaning against his window, you know. Yeah. He's like, dude, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, they are. They are. One thing it's illegal to be driving with all you're on your cell phone. Okay. It's where you are. The handheld. Yes, where, it is. Where, it's where illegal. Are you are. It's illegal to text and drive and talk on your cell phone while you're driving. In in Wisconsin. Here. Yep. Yeah. And I think. And it's I, like, I think here. Yeah. I think here it's only in uh, Albuquerque and Santa Fe where it's illegal. Okay. The, the rest of the states. You know, wide open. So right, but I mean, you could do still do hands free. You know, if you have the Bluetooth or whatever. Right, you know. as if that's really any better. It isn't because it's just as distracting. Trust you're you're, you're me. concentrating it, it, on the call and not the drive. It's right, it's a little bit better, but you're still being distracted by having a conversation while you're driving. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and it's on not the, the same as talking to somebody in the car. Exactly, yeah. it's a distraction. Yeah. And so, I mean, it, it's a good thing to hands-free, I have to admit, you know, but I usually keep the conversations very short and just, you know. Just pull driving, over. Just freaking pull over if you. Right. If, if you're going to make a call or whatever or send a text, yeah. pull over. Right. Which I have done many times, you know. Yep. Yep. Um, it's just not a good idea to be distracted by anything ah. while you're driving. And then. Use your freaking turn signals, people. I, I miss the old... It's like, it's the just old, common uh, sense. Like, if I knew he, that guy was turning right, I could have taken my left, like, 20 seconds sooner because I knew he was going to turn. You right, know what I mean? right. It's like, dude, I was, it was some fucking 19-year-old or something. It's like, dude, yeah. you fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do miss the old days before there were cell phones. Yeah, me too. You, you know, know. You had, if you had to make a call when you were on the road, you had to go to a pay phone. I, 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 you know, they don't need a freaking electronic leash. Right. You know, and it's just been, people are like, oh, it's so great, you know, all this technology, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you guys are fucking morons. Yeah. We've been, we've been over, it's been inundated. It, it's overdone. Yeah. It's over the top. And now this 5G thing. Well, that's okay, a whole if you different think problem. Five G is good. You're fucking mistaken. That's a whole different problem. Yeah, it is. You know, yeah. they want to bring this in, and it's not well, a they, good it's thing. It's not that they I want mean, to. They're they're going for it full bore. Yes. Apparently, they don't like the cancer rates right now, so they want to increase those. So right. They're going to do the five G because, goddammit, it, they want us to have fucking cancer. Yes, they do. And you know what? Fuck that. I'm fucking sick of cancer. I hate fucking cancer. And I fucking have lost loved ones to cancer. Right. Since the 70s. And um, their treatment hasn't changed much since the 70s. No, since the 50s. They're still, right, they're still doing the chemo and radiation. Right. And we know uh, otherwise here at Freaker's Ball and at RLM Media, Real Liberty Media, we know... That there is cures for cancer out there. Oh and yeah, it's not tons. just one. Right. There's many. Lots of good cures ones. For cancer Lots out of there. good natural ones that will not yes. harm you and will only go after the cancer and not the rest of your body. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So you know, um, I talked about this last week. I talk about this so often. You have to be your own advocate. You have to take care of yourself. You have to do things to ensure that you can stave off some of this shit that you're exposed to every fucking day. Right. The chemicals, the toxins, the best you thing you can do is go na as natural as you can with everything. Like Sure. Everything, you know, even laundry detergent. 
Absolutely. Uh, toothpaste. Everything. Uh, everything. Just try to be as natural as you can and then consume things that all and do things that help build your immune system. Sure. And um it this is where it's about survival, okay? It's about avoiding getting cancer because they want you to have it. They want you to fucking die. Okay? They <laughs> That's do. That's pretty much it. Yeah. They fucking want you to fucking die because they're they they love they want to po control a population. Yes, yes. And so they want you to get sick and fucking die. So, right. Or your loved ones. Maybe not you specifically, but they want a bunch of us gone. All right? Yeah, well, if you go back to my the earlier articles we talked about, the AI, you know, they're going to yep. have the, the robots and the AI handling everything, and they don't right. need you. They don't need as many humans <laughs> here. as They want less humans on this planet. Right. Because they that means more for them. Absolutely. So So it's really fucking disgusting if you think Oh absolutely. Anyway, earlier you were talking about it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, okay. uh, earlier you were talking about uh Trump was talking about uh, he's gonna watch <laughs> watch the social media. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this article comes out today from uh Breitbart. Uh -huh. Link banning is Facebook's terrifying new censorship tool. Oh, link banning. Link okay. banning. Yep. And so it says, uh, what did I do there? I think I turned something down without... Great. Right up That's there. fucking wonderful. So, so the banning of multiple political commentators from Facebook and Instagram, including, uh, it says conservatives, whatever that means, Paul mm -hmm. Joseph Watson and Laura Loomer, whoever she is, is an outrage uh, against the ideals of an open internet on its own. But beyond the bans on individuals, Facebook has deployed an even more terrifying tool of censorship, link banning. Uh, the, main, the, main, the main, the mainstream media, the clap, were, of course, tipped off about the bans in advance, and the uh, Atlantic report containing the following eye-opening detail, not only has Alex Jones' personal account now been banned from Facebook, in addition... To Prison Planet's editor in chief, YouTube star, uh, okay, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, but all links to InfoWars sites are now banned across the platform. Share InfoWars too often, and you'll be banned too. Uh, it says uh, from the Atlantic InfoWars is subject to the strictest ban. Facebook and Instagram will remove any content containing InfoWars videos radio segments or articles unless the post is exactly or explicitly condemning the content. So you can post the link if you're going to badmouth them. But, uh, but if you're just posting it as normal or saying something good about them, you're done. And Facebook will also remove any groups set up to share InfoWars content and events promoting any of the banned extremist figures like Beth Z. Uh, according to the company spokesman, Twitter, YouTube, and Apple have also banned Jones and InfoWars. Uh, this <laughs> takes this take censorship to a, a, on a social media altogether yes. new levels. <laughs> if, yes. you, if you post uh, InfoWars content on Facebook and Facebook-owned Instagram or Facebook-owned YouTube, your post will be removed. If you post it repeatedly, you will be banned. Uh, wow. Note the wording, too. You'll be banned unless you're condemning InfoWars. Facebook is now brazenly using its power to reward certain political positions yeah, and punish see. others. Yeah. So, um, how's that How's that monitoring <laughs> of, of social media going there, uh, for you. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Trumpy? Right. How's that social media monitoring working out for you? Um, <laughs> not very well. Not very well. And so, um, yeah, it, it's 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 ridiculous. Um, and really, Alex, I mean, who ever took the guy serious anyway? I, I, I didn't. I never. I, I, I just. I, I don't really. Um, I, I don't really get the whole. No. Deal on on. I don't get it. On on all of that, but um, 
<laughs> it's crazy. Um, so anyway, what was, what was Beth saying down here? Um, but 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 uh, anyone mentioning? Uh, let's see, he said from listing. What? Oh, anyone mentioning Paul Joseph Watts at Infowars is banned, or gets the poster banned, and Ron Paul, and she's buffing up her extremist badge and. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. Circle ask, isn't it Facebook's choice who they wish to have as customers? Customers. Or customers. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, it is their choice. They are, quote, a private company, unquote. Uh, and, I, and I put those quotes around that because they are huge in, hugely involved with the government. So yes. they're not really a private company. No, Basically, they're, not. they're part of the NSA. They're part of the CIA. Yes. Uh, they they lobby for new laws to be passed, and they get those laws passed. Yep. So they're really um, they're really like screwed a politician. Up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. BitChute, yeah, uh, RLM has a huge BitChute account. Uh, we have hundreds of videos posted on BitChute. So um, yeah, use BitChute. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, that 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 would be my suggestion to people. Um, Bitshoot doesn't have the music, so I have to go. I still use the YouTube for that. Um, but uh, they they got a lot of really good stuff over there. So. Um. Uh, and here is another thing. Here is another thing. Okay. Um. Um. So apparently, this happened in Connecticut. This kid, this 18-year-old get, kid gets shot and killed because it was a traffic stop. You know, and sometimes you get freaked out. You know, and this kid's 18. Probably never had to deal with a cop before being pulled over or whatever. Right. Apparently, the, the plate supposedly did not match the vehicle. That's what they've said. I'm not, I haven't confirmed that. Okay. But, um... They, this cop, he, he, you know, who knows? He might have been trying to like move his vehicle or something, but it was a traffic stop. Unless they thought maybe it was stolen because the plates didn't match. But the kid starts driving away, and the cop like basically goes in front of the car and fucking like, shoots this kid dead. And it's just like this is just another example of a fucked up of, of the, the fucked up police practices. Right, you know, it's just like they're just like if they don't if they don't abide by what you say right away, shoot and kill them. That's like, pretty much it. Yeah, you know, it's just like no matter what the circumstances, it's like this was if this was a minor traffic stop, which it very well could have been, but they're saying that the cop the place didn't match the vehicle, which that could be a lie. Um, it, it, it's just another example. I'm just wanting to post that one. It's yeah, okay. right. I didn't hear about that one previously, so I just saw that one. Okay. Um, Go ahead. This next story. Circle is asking me if I would serve Alex Jones in my <laughs> bar. Absolutely. No, come on in, bud. I, I, sure. You know, don't leave your megaphone outside, but uh, <laughs> other than that, you're cool. Uh, I mean, I got, I got no problem with you. Um, now, I don't want to hear any of your pro pro cop stuff or pro-Israel stuff or pro-government right. stuff, which he espouses all kinds of pro things that I don't like. Um, however, i got no problem with Alex Jones as a, as a person. He's, he's a wild guy, but uh, whatever, man. It's his opinion. It's his view. Look, we let Hansel in here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. All right. So here, here's this article from the mindunleashed.com. Um and what a shocker, federal judge sides with federal government. <laughs> federal what? You cut out. I don't know why. I, I said federal judge sides with federal government. You're cutting out. I don't know what's going on. I'm cutting out. Yeah, I might be wire. I'm not sure. Maybe, I'm, uh, maybe my system. I don't know. I, I don't know. Everything was smooth on my end here. Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as I could tell. I said federal judge sides with federal government. Did you hear that? Uh, no, it cut off. I got to, I got to, I right. got to fucking. All right. So anyway, they rule that mass surveillance can remain secret. 
<laughs> All right, she, she can't hear me. All right, anyway, it says, despite a wealth of public information detailing the U.S. government's secret uh, warrantless mass surveillance pro programs, a federal judge has blocked a lawsuit claiming that revealing any details of them surveilling you would threaten national security. So the federal, federal judge ruled uh, that the federal government can assert state secrets privilege to keep details of the warrantless mass surveillance program secret. The rulings from the U.S. Dis District Judge Jeffrey, Jeffrey White brings to an end a legal battle that has lasted for more than 10 years as five Americans sought to reveal the full scope of the controversial spying program. The plaintiffs have been re represented by the EFF, Electronic Frontier Foundation, since 2008, several years before whistle whistleblower Ed Snowden. All right, we got a phone call, and hello? Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, right. So anyway, I'm talking about this, this article here where the federal judge is agreeing, uh, sided with the federal government. Okay. Shocker, right? No, not, not really. <laughs> I posted a link, some some kind of wise ass comment like that. That, gee, what a shocker that the federal judge agrees with the federal government, and and I got a whole bunch of retweets and and likes on, on that tweet. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so um, yeah, that so the 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 mass surveillance going on, the warrantless mass surveillance going on. Yes. The judge says. It's fine for the federal government to do that, and we can't tell you anything about it because that's a threat to national security. Oh my God! Give me a break. Uh, you're right, but uh, of course that's the uh, that's the way that's gonna go. So maybe this will go further. Maybe it'll go into the Supreme Court or whatever. But again, the Supreme Court is just part of the federal government as well, and and so they're of course going to agree on that. The judge refused to comment on whether. Previous reports on government surveillance confirmed that the U.S. government spied on Americans. Well, he doesn't have to confirm it. We all know it's true. Uh, the judge also stated that evidence submitted by the plaintiffs did not support claims that the NSA violated the Wiretap Act. Right, because you're not going to get any actual information from the NSA. Uh, so, uh, anyway. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Let's see. Uh, I'd survey Jay the Beer says, Beth, yeah, that's good. Um, okay, federal judge side of the federal government. Yep, that's it. Okay. Da, 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 da. All right, good. That, so let's play some more music. You there? All right. We're going to play some more music. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to play some music here, and we All will right. be back on the other side. This one, you have yes. to, well, if, you might, you don't have to read the lyrics. You can probably understand them, but go ahead, read the lyrics. It's a very lyric important song. This is the Lords of the New Church. All right. Enjoy. Everybody's looking for something. There ain't no question about that. <laughs> Eurythmic, sweet dreams. Um, <laughs> there's a moose girl request there. Before that, we had Samantha Fish, Killing the Floor, back from uh, 2014. She's come a long way in five years. And, uh, yeah, I love that Samantha Fish woman. And we kicked it off with the Lords of the New Church doing Open Your Eyes, a very uh, interesting song there, indeed. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so a friend just posted a little bit, a couple of days ago looking for check out some podcasts, any recommendations, and what are they about? Might have to link them up some RLM action there. Yes, indeed. I might have to link that shit up right there. Link it, baby, link it. <laughs> yeah, I will. You know, usually if I tell friends that I do this show, some don't even give a fuck. They're like, yeah, whatever. Right. They're not, like, into the Internet. They're not, like, you know. And they definitely don't agree with me. Well, you know, in a lot of how I feel. Oh, yeah, of course. Because they're still, like, wrapped up in the whole two-party system, and they're just, you know, 
me, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know. You know, cool. I love my friends. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying they're bad. Right. <laughs> but everyone wants something. Flash. You might not be looking for something, but everybody wants something. Oh yeah, everybody's looking for something. Everyone's looking for something. <laughs> everybody's looking. <laughs> anyway, um. So when I tell people usually about the show, usually they're like, you know, this doesn't even interest them or whatever. Um, I know I've told a couple of people about the show. They've tuned in a couple of times and they're like, oh, fuck that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, which is fine. You know, um, some people are, 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 are snowflakes. And they, I am not a fucking snowflake. Right. Man's like, man, heard me say some people are snowflakes. She's like, are you? I'm like, I is not. I am not no snowflake. Oh hell. <laughs> I mean, Grant, well, you wouldn't describe me that way, would you? Certainly not. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> anyway, some people, I get it. They're so wrapped up into what they've seen on TV and what they hear on CNN or Fox, and I don't care. What affiliation you are, if you watch CNN or Fox, you're looking in the wrong direction for your information, okay? You're right, and you, you know, you can include the uh, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS. Yes, all of, all them. of them. Yeah. All of those. And that, and that tells me, for one thing, you're not thinking for yourself. When you might think you're thinking for yourself, but you're you're making an opinion based on a mainstream media art or news story that's like purposely slanted to make you think a certain way. Right, and you just and pair it out, out, pair it out their their talking points. Right, and you're better off thinking for yourself and doing your own research. And we say this time and again, but it's true that's... because the truth is out there. You That's just gotta right. search the right stories and don't search via mainstream media. Do not. Well, I say research. I mean, look shit up. All right, let me, let me do a let me do a couple quick hitter tech stories uh, here. Yeah, All right, Cowboy Tech posted this one today. All right. Google adds new option to auto delete your location history and activity data. So there's a, apparently there's a, a way to do that if you're a Google user, and you can you can choose keep it for three months, keep it for eighteen months, uh, or delete it manually. Keep until I delete manually. How long is right for you? They don't have any that that it says automatically delete everything, but um, they they have these options: three months, eighteen months, or till you delete manually. So it, it, apparently this, according to Google gives you more control over how long the tech company can hold on to your data. And so um, as far as for search engines, just don't use Google uh, and, and try and avoid as much Google stuff as you can. Um, but uh, if you're going to use Google, uh, they have a way to delete your stuff manually. Uh, whether that actually deletes anything or not, it's really uh, right. whatever. So, but what I was going to say, too, Graham, is YouTube's Google now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't so care. You, if you're using YouTube, you're using Google. Yeah, and, that, and that's fine. I don't care if they know which music videos I watch. Right, Because that's right. pretty much but all I... don't I, always watch just music videos on YouTube. I watch other types of videos, Yeah, too. I, I know, and most, most, people, whatever, you know. most people do, but I pretty much use it for music. Um, right, but I just want to say, YouTube is Google now. Right, and Instagram, and uh, um, yep. so... There's a, there's plenty of other options uh, out there for other type videos. Like I said, BitChute has most of those other videos that you're watching. They but they don't have right. the, but they don't have the music. All right. So this other one, Cowboy Tech also posted. If you have a Dell computer, and I'm assuming, although this is strictly about Dell, it probably applies to other major computer manufacturers. Uh, but this one is specifically Dell. Pre-installed software flaw exposes most Dell computers to remote hacking. So if you use a Dell computer, then beware. Hackers could compromise your system remotely. Great. Uh, Bill Durkampal, a 17-year-old... Dell? Yeah, yeah, Dell. Uh, Bill Durkampal, a 17-year-old independent security researcher, 
has discovered a critical remote code execution vulnerability in the Dell Support Assist Utility. 17, is he some fucking phenom or something? Oh, apparently he must be. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it comes pre-installed on your Dell computer, and if you use the wow. uh, Dell Support Assist, known yeah. as Dell System Detect, oh, shit. Um, then uh, beware. You can you can do, you, you can uninstall that or uh, okay. put the new version on. Apparently, so there's a solution. Yeah, there there is a solution, but uh, okay, there's that. Um, and quickly, one last little bit All here. Right. Um, just because I, I like McAfee. <laughs> yeah, I know you like him. He's a crazy mother. He's he's a, he's, he, I, don't, I don't hate him. I don't, I don't hate him. I, he's, he's a crazy mofo, but he gets yeah, a lot of stuff crazy right. Crazy yeah. <laughs> All right, so John McAfee's first crypto Visa card launches, okay. launches in 90 days. So if you have crypto, wow. you can you can deposit your crypto into your Visa card debit or, or use your the cryptocurrency debit card uh and and use that for that um so hooray for crypto debit visa <laughs> john mcafee stuff all right <laughs> all right we, we got we got to do our last little bit here um okay <laughs> so but check that out the, the link okay. the link will be in the in the post show blog for anybody that, because uh, I didn't really get to cover any of the story, but uh, okay. there, there it is for you. So, uh, it, it, yeah, go John. It's absolutely, Beth. Um, so, uh, yeah. All right, so let's do this here. Um, okay, let's do it. I was unfamiliar with the song, but the other night I was watching the season finale of the TV show Supernatural, 14th, okay. 14th season. Uh, season. Wow, season. that's been a long time. Yeah, it has. And uh, anyway, so at the very end of the show, they played this song and was like, "Hey, that's Lemmy," and I went and came and looked up okay. the song. So here it is for you. Motorhead, God was never on your side. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Christopher Amoroso and uh, Black Betty live there. It's a different version of the uh, Christopher Amoroso's Black Betty than I normally play here uh, when I do play his music. So, um, yeah, great. I love Swamp, you swamp Rock. Uh, anyway, we kicked it off there with Motorhead, and God was never on your side. Uh, so uh, that will wrap it up for us here on the Freaker's Ball. Yes, indeed. And uh, appreciate y'all being here tonight, being part of the show, being part of Real Liberty Media. And uh, tomorrow yeah, you got thank the... Thank you all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, tomorrow you got the Dark Table at noon with Flash yeah. and, and maybe a hostage. He's looking for hostages. Noon so, Eastern? That's not right. Uh, it is noon Eastern, yeah. Noon Eastern, so, oh, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. my time. Never yeah. mind. I got screwed up. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, my bad. And, and yeah. I will be on Noon Eastern on Sunday with the Blues, and we'll be doing the trivia here in the chat. Hal Anthony's on at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific, with Behind yeah. the Woodshed opening up the big yeah. old can of whoop-ass. Can of whoop-ass. I'll be back Monday night with Grim Leftovers at 7 p.m. Eastern. Yep. Yeah. And uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Tuesday, and, is, yeah. Tuesday is Flash yeah. and Vinny. In a perfect world, Grammy will be here Wednesday night, but not Friday night uh, okay. next week on uh, the Grammys Rocket Chair, and Flash will be back for his uh, additional program, his solo show, on Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 20% off. <laughs> so, uh, thanks, right everybody. On. What? Right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. Farm out. Um. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a dork. You see that link that you should include the full show. Yeah, up? I did. I'll, I'll take a look okay, at it. I okay. haven't had a chance to All get right. there yet. Awesome. Okay. Um. So, uh, I guess that's it. Everybody have a great weekend. That's it. Yep, have an awesome one, people. We love y'all. Yep. Peace. Peace. <laughs>